Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm diving back into On One Photo Raw and I wanted to kind of revisit the portrait tools. It's been a while since I've really used them, admittedly. And uh, over the last couple of months, I've been to a couple of events here in Austin where they get models and people that want their portraits taken and photographers show up, that sort of thing. So I got a couple of portraits I was just going to take a look at and kind of run through some of the tools in On One because they're powerful, honestly, and they're really good. I like them quite a bit. And uh, it's kind of fun to edit portraits, even though I'm not really a portrait person. It's good for me, right? You got to do the thing that you probably feel the least confident about in order to get better at it. That's what I'm doing. So here we go. Here's the first one. I've done nothing to this photo, but you will notice there is a lens correction applied. If I turn that off, you will see that it has brightened the photo. I'm okay with that. I like it. So I'm going to leave that lens correction on. I'm going to go ahead and go straight to the portrait tab. When you click on that, it'll find a face. I've already been in the photo because I've kind of rehearsed what I wanted to do. So it's already found the face. Um, and, you know, it isolates the face and it gives you a lot of great control over kind of what's happening. So let, let me get out of mass view and let me zoom in a little bit because we are going to focus a little bit on the face here. And then we'll do some touch up edits. Um, in the retouching section under details, there's some nice, nice things here. I'm going to give a little bit of blemishes and a little bit of smoothing. I tend to kind of like that look, but I don't know why. It's, um, it depends on the photo. I think it looks um, kind of nice on this one, so I'm going to go with it. I do want to increase um, shine, which is basically going to help remove the shine from her face. So if I turn that on, there it is before and after. A little bit softer. I also kind of like soft in most portraits. Um, not all of them. It kind of depends. If it's a scraggly looking person that's kind of rough, I, I kind of like to accentuate that. But um, most of these kind of portraits, I would rather smooth a little bit. Uh, the face brightness works really well. You know, um, it, it finds the face fantastically. I think that looks good. And what I generally find is I'm balancing the brightness on the face with the shine removal. Just want to be careful there. In fact, I might go a little bit more, um, you know, a little bit higher on the shine. I don't see any need to uh, slim face or necessarily increase the size of the eyes, uh, but I might uh, brighten them out just a little bit. You can kind of see how that goes. Here's a cool feature, which I think is nice. If you click on that eye tool, it'll show you where the eyes are. And in this case, I actually need to move that a little bit so I can get it a little bit better centered on that eye. And this one's slightly off. And so uh, you can just move that around with the blue dot and then just kind of stretch these uh, little points in order to perfectly align them. Now that I've done that, I'm going to do a, a little bit more whitening, maybe give it a tiny bit of detail. I might slightly enhance the brows. I mean, they're already uh, very dark, matches her hair color quite well. And dark circles, none of that really happening. So as far as the mouth, you're not seeing any teeth. I might give it a little bit of lip vibrance, just a little bit, because, you know, these kind of portraits, people tend to prefer them to be a bit realistic. So I you know, I have a habit of, um, I like to edit photos. And so I like to do creative things with portraits. I kind of have to rein myself in because um, that's not necessarily always a, a good thing. Um, but if you look at the before and after, I mean, we've come a long way already. And that's just a, a quick kind of edit. I'm going to go ahead and go back to fit. And for me, I think what I would do next is go into effects and I'd probably just get a vignette and kind of center that uh, around her. I'm going to click vignette. This, uh, oh, actually, first I'm going to click Big Softy. That's, I like that one quite a bit. I think that looks nice. She's kind of glowing. And then this button here allows you to um, choose the uh, center of the vignette. And you can just hold your mouse down, move that around. And I'm going to go ahead and do something about like that. I don't want to put it on her face. For me, it has too much light in that upper left corner when I do that. So I'm going to kind of go a little bit basically towards the center. She's still pretty bright, but that upper left corner doesn't get too bright. And so if I go before and after with the vignette, I think that helps. The only thing I really wish they had was an inner light like in Luminar. That is just the best, uh, the best thing I think in a vignette. I use it um, literally every time I use a vignette in Luminar. But here we go. There's the before, uh, excuse me, that's the after. There's the before. So subtle, gentle, but easy and quick and frankly powerful adjustments with these portrait tools. One more time before and after. I'm going to jump in and do one more that's slightly different. Okay, this one is slightly different. This was just this past week, and um, as you can see, it was a little bit of a theme. Not everybody was really into the Halloween theme, but this gentleman, um, <laughs> he was just kind of cool, to be honest. Uh, I love what he did here, but anyway, this is a portrait where I would do things a little bit different. I don't feel like I have to follow the traditional portrait kind of approach. Uh, once again, lens correction before and after slightly brighten the photo, which is fine. 
I'm gonna go into tone and color. I'm gonna add a little bit of contrast, pull down the highlights, maybe lift the midtones a little bit. Um, something about like that, maybe pull the highlights down a little bit more. That's helping to control a little bit of the shine that's uh, like on his face. Speaking of face, I'm gonna go ahead and go to Portrait Tools. It finds him, again, I've already been in the photo, so it found him already. If you hadn't yet opened a photo, it will take a moment and say, finding face uh, or faces, and then uh, you'll be set. Um, as far as details and things like that go, I don't think I would do any of that here. I kind of like him uh, being, um, you know, basically the way, uh, excuse me, the way he is. Uh, I didn't mean to close that, I wanted to close this. Um, I might brighten the face a tiny bit just to put a little bit more light there. Actually, um, I think I will go in here now uh, and pull back the shine slightly. So, you know, pretty minor changes here overall, just kind of brightening the face a little bit. Um, one of the things I found in this image is, um, I went to increase eyes, uh, here it is, uh, left and right eye, and his left eye, which is actually right eye in the photo, if I go like this, it's kind of increasing the size of his, the middle of his face, kind of between his eyes, a little bit of the bridge of his nose and that sort of thing. And so when I clicked on eyes, here's what I found was, um, it didn't exactly line up perfectly, so I had to move these around, kind of like on the last one. I mean, it does a good job, but you just want to be careful and, of course, accurate, because if you're going to increase the size of the eye, it kind of bulges out, and you don't want to bulge out uh, you know, any features on the face. But uh, I might try to whiten that a little bit, maybe brighten the eyes a tad. Again, minor changes. This is not a like a model portrait as, as much as the last one was, but there it is before and after. Pretty simple, straightforward stuff. Powerful tools here. I'm not gonna mess with lips or anything like that. No teeth are showing. But in a photo like this, I would go over here to effects and have a little bit of fun, which is what I'm gonna do now. So I'm actually gonna use HDR look, which to be clear, I don't really recommend using HDR look on very many portraits. This guy's not grungy, but he's definitely acting up, so to speak. I mean, it's a Halloween theme. I feel like you can kind of get away with that a little bit. So I like that. I just applied it everywhere. I didn't even care. And I'm doing the same thing with dynamic contrast. Just adds a little bit more uh, crispiness, which I think looks good. And then I'm just going to wrap that up one more time with a vignette. And I'm going to go once again with Big Softy. And I'm going to pick that center until I can figure out where I want it most. Um, I definitely want it kind of like that. Um, so a little bit, not exactly centered, a little bit higher than center. But if you look at the vignette before and after, you know, soften up that background or, or hide that background. It's soft enough. I was shooting uh, both of these with an 85 millimeter 1.8 prime, and they were both shot at 1.8. And so there's a little bit different portrait. Obviously, the guy's in character for Halloween, so it's not kind of your traditional approach. But I was able to here combine some of the portrait tools, which I think are fabulous and work really well, give you a nice bit of control over the image, and then couple that with a couple of filters that I wouldn't typically use, HDR look, dynamic contrast, but I think they work well. And if you look at the before and after, there it is a little bit softer, um, obviously a little bit darker, and now a little bit more kind of uh, crunched up and of course brighter in the places that you want it to be bright, which is primarily his face. So a couple of the different examples, um, I wouldn't say extreme differences, but fairly different in terms of the kind of portraits they are, both fun, interesting, uh, and, and you know, I had a good time editing them. But the key thing here, I think, is that the portrait tools and on one, they give you a lot of control and they're useful and that sort of thing. So if you haven't been using them or if you don't do a lot of portraits, maybe take some photos of the family, take some selfies, practice, experiment. There's a lot of power and control that you get with the tools. And I'm gonna keep doing that. I'll, I'll drop in portrait videos here and there. Again, if you've been here before, you know it's not really my thing, but I feel like the only way to really grow as a photographer is to do the stuff that you may not have historically done. I'm trying to do more of that. So that's it for this one. I appreciate you guys stopping by and hanging out. I'll be back soon with more videos. You guys take care of yourselves. Until then, I'll see you later and adios.